Welcome back to Larps and Tarps. I'm joined today here with... Alex. Kerry. Morgan. And Tom. Hey. <laughs> well, that was confusing. And <laughs> I'm Chloe. What do you mean? This is what I've always sounded like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. That would have been a perfect time for a well, actually, Tom. Well, actually, <laughs> the rules make it fun. <laughs> oh, my God, it's like there's two Morgans. God, Morgan, you're such a snooze. <laughs> well, well, all right, we've derailed already. Fantastic. <laughs> Welcome back. We are here to talk about E3. Chloe, your voice and is like hanging on by a thread. <laughs> this is the most voice I've had since... Friday night. Oh, we we yeah. literally delayed recording so that Chloe's voice could recover, and it has recovered significantly. <laughs> oh yeah, Chloe on like Sunday evening was just like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we well, were so hyped. Continued to talk throughout yeah. the van journey. And I was like so sure that you were just going to go. Oh fuck it! <laughs> I can't. I almost <laughs> did at one point. Yeah. I got lightheaded because I had oh, to like you. <laughs> because oh. I had to like. Shout because there was no voice, so it just kind of was like whispers. So I had to like shout, so noise I was say, came you out. You could tell that you were like forcing it. Out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But, but um, so excited to talk about it, <laughs> and I'm very excited to talk about it today with all you guys. Yeah, Aww. there isn't really much I can start off by saying apart from wow, what an event! Are we? I so I obviously I don't have a crystal clear of the previous ten events I've been to, like a crystal clear memory of every, every, all of them. But for me, this does feel like maybe the best event I've ever been the to. Best yeah, event. Easily yeah. my best event so far. I um, cannot begin to. I, say, I think my last event was also really fucking up there. Mm. But yeah, this one, I can't really say anything bad about it, really. No. it's If it's not my best event, it's definitely on par. Yeah, because mm. obviously, like you say, we've been... Oh, well, yeah. Not going to lie, I think the weather has a fucking massive impact. I was yeah. just... Yeah, yeah, we literally was like no rain... It wasn't. It was hot at points, but it was never like brutally hot. No, yeah, yeah. it was a yeah. good breeze most of the time. And like um, just knowing that you're not gonna have to like get your tent out and dry it out yeah. after just yeah. makes like that whole Sunday so much nicer. Yeah. Spoiler alert: the first dry pack down in a while. Yeah, yeah. no, that was crazy. over a year, I think. What a treat! Um, yeah, because I think last year was all wet, but it was just it just the event was fantastic. Uh, yeah, we so we got a new camp set up. So we had two tents clipped to the side of our awning, and the steward of our house, which I know is technically a March term, but we've we've appropriated it. Who kind of tends to the house and forges magic items and uh, was doing all the food. So yeah, like a kitchen that he was selling out from. We had like the banner flying, the armor of the camp set up looked fantastic. It, it really did. did yeah, mm. we nipped yeah. by for some food. It looked like a proper, fully functioning medieval camp. I'm really yeah. glad. It definitely felt like when you were sitting there, I was like, it felt like it the most it has. It ever. made yeah. it feel a bit more authentic as well because it added like a little bit of depth instead of all the tents facing the same way, around, especially around the Glory Square, which is obviously very like linearly yeah, mapped yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. Like having them just on that slight diagonal made yeah. it just feel, you know, just. And I think also in, having yeah. like yeah. having a second tent there contributes to the feeling of it being a camp. Yeah, rather than just your tent. The other tent was there, but it was behind. But because of a second tent there, it's like, great, this is a kind of a community kind of thing. Um, absolutely amazing setup. Um, and the people I was with were really great as well. The Dread Shield camp looking great as always. Oh, the Dread Shield camp always looks good. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Jackdaw camp significantly bigger and with a huge a bar area. goddamn bar. Like, yeah. And, and an awning. I was saying to the jackdaws, I remember this two years ago when it was one tenth. <laughs> and the other jackdaw was camped OC. <laughs> and there's two of us back in those days. Now there's like seven tents there and a bar. I, <laughs> like, yeah. I think on the register we have 13 tents in total rotating oh, really? and out. So, yeah. oh God. And I think I've got 25-ish doors. So, Absolutely mad. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, said, I want a small guild of 10 <laughs> members. When you said 25-ish doors, I was like, wait, 20, wait uh, you, 13 tents. On, I've realised what you mean now. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah, Jack doors. D-A-W's, yeah. not yeah. Um, D-O-O-R. Like, 13 tents, well. but 25 doors. Oh, the bar, <laughs> it was 
a lifesaver. We don't oh, know if it's brilliant. going back to next event yet, but oh, really? yeah, yeah, we're not sure if he can make it next event. Um, but he wants to, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic start to the weekend. I think we obviously we all discussed our plans last time. Mm. How similar to your plans did everything turn out on the Friday, I guess? Did you have because oh, I, I make myself a schedule now. I know Chloe was like, I've got on the podcast last week, you were like, I've got a million things to do. What are they? Fucked if I know. I just know I'm busy. Um, I should have made a schedule. Did you manage to get everything you needed to get done? Like, what was your kind of early start looking like? There was a few things that I wasn't able to do, but I did manage to cram the majority of things in. And I did find time for a quick sit down at one point. Hey. Oh, what a treat. I know. But yeah, it was a jam packed weekend and I wouldn't have changed it. Mm. I think you would have want changed one thing though. How's your ankle? Ooh. Oh, you know, I've just switched over my legs and I can feel it already. It's still rather swollen and rather bruised. So on Thirsty Thursdays, we don't usually cover Thirsty Thursdays, do we? But <laughs> it's a time of sin and evil. We <laughs> yeah. And happens, silliness. What happens yeah. on Thirsty Thursdays usually stays there. But um, one of us had a little, a little accident, eh? A bit of a rumble. Well, um, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. But a... Quite possibly, a um, drunken fight club might have been started outside mm. Senate in the early hours. We can confirm nor deny this. I just, I was having such like a calm conversation with Kyle, uh, and we're just like chatting for a while. I could see you all brawl, and I was like, I'm gonna join in with that in a minute. And as soon as I went to join in, it was like, nope, Chloe's hurt herself. <laughs> <laughs> no more. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, we started a fight club. And I may or may not have ended up in the med tent at 1am. Woo. I didn't realise you went to the med tent. Yeah, I said I was going to go to the toilet and then just went hop, to the med tent. hopped off to the med tent. <laughs> your your Daisy... secret shame. Like, a, I'm not injured. <laughs> well, because I knew that everyone would be like, oh, like they would just make a thing about it. So I was like, oh, they no, They wouldn't I'm let fine. you fight. We, we wouldn't let you go on the battlefield if oh. we knew you'd been in the med tent. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm On a side note, I'm going to go piss. <laughs> but... um. Daisy and Sweet. Sophia came with me anyway, but yeah. um, they were just lightly suggested that it might possibly be fractured, but just to keep an eye. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. It's fine. We're, we're absolutely grand. I had a power nap whilst I was waiting for you to limp back. You did. You just fell asleep on the side of the road outside said it. It was honest. I just came back at all. was just sat. Legs crossed, hunched over. Tom, that's so on brand. Oh, we were like... <laughs> Sorry, I mean, yeah, I know, I was very sleepy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw an opportunity to have a quick yeah. nap, I took it. We were literally like, are you right, Tom? And he was like, oh, yeah, I was tired, so I just fell asleep. And we were like, <laughs> okay, cool. And then he just got up, swigged a big old swig from his tinny and was like, yeah, let's go. Tom's that uncle that falls asleep in the cosy armchair at house parties. <laughs> to be fair, I'm the nana of the group now. I'll just sit <laughs> and injure yourself and hobble around. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. How did you enjoy Minion Party, Morgan? Oh, well, well, all right. We've discussed the fracture. What happens on th Thirsty Thursday stays, stays on, on Thursday. Oh, have Thursdays. I just outed you? Yeah, come on. Let's not, yeah, let's not <laughs> delve into the debauchery that was Minion Party. Uh, I can tell you that I got my player pack on Thursday and I got, I, I, I had, do you know what I had in my player pack? It's a very big player pack. I had 18 rings Ooh. and two traumatic wounds. <laughs> what a treat. <laughs> I was like, what a profitable weekend. <laughs> um, I went to the Stella Shaw of the house, went to Viridian. I was like, hey, you know, I have to give you half of my, <laughs> half of my player pack. Well, there you go. Nine is, rings. Is have a traumatic, traumatic wound. wound. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a whole nine crowns, 18 rings in my ching. I got... Killing rats better than glory, eh? I think I got like one throne couple crowns and some rings like i actually yeah i got similar lot. but i just got the straight like flat business yeah thing that you get. i got i was rewarded with rich role play yeah so uh i um got two traumatic wounds one was that like my vision kept going white and i could i stepped stopped hearing things at dramatic dramatically appropriate times and the other one was that i had a lingering wound in my arm and if ever i felt like strong emotion it really hurt to the mm. point where it might like incapacitate me um, so I went to Hemlock Effects on Traders Row on the Friday, and I got some makeup done that made it look like my eyes had been burned out. So oh. I had like scar makeup all on the other side. Oh, wait, there's a trader that does makeup. For you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> it was really it when? He Hemlock Effects. They were absolutely fantastic. It was a 15 minute appointment, cost me a tenner. Really good. That's, That's well good. That's... Like, like for a while, I think, for at least this whole year. 
Oh, what um, a fucking awesome business. Yeah, nice. So if you've got like a traumatic wound that you want to get done up before you go in, there was really she had that stuff that like um put it on your skin, it tightens it up so it looks like you've got scars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I drew a dick in my hand last event with it. Oh. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> you were branded by your enemy with a penis. <laughs> oh, no, there's, I just wanted to try it out. No, I know, I know. I looked at Daisy and I was like, what do I do? And they were like, I don't know. I went, okay, the only appropriate thing to do, do. Obviously. A dick on your hand. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, that was really cool. 10 out of 10, really, you recommend them. They're oh, really good. Solid. So I got that all done before time in. I wanted to get, um, you can get eye drops, which are red. Because hmm. so, well, I wanted to drop them in my eyes and have, like, you know, when you someone's got like a burst blood vessel on their eye, it goes yeah. I wanted to get that effect, but I didn't have time to get them. Um, so, yeah, I was like starting with a traumatic wound, so pretty, pretty hefty. It's a playing. fun <laughs> way to start time in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's not the first time I've got It's great starting time in, like, injured. It's great. It's great. It's like you know, straight into the game with role playing. Yeah. I actually would love to start um, time in with a traumatic wound, but unfortunately, businesses don't really give you that. No. <laughs> it's like military units, so like, give you so much role play opportunities yeah. I feel yeah we're going to war I think in this downtime so we have to Thurun in we're going to Thurun in hopefully yeah. we might have a, so a few exciting. traumatic wounds knocking around the Dread Shields camp yeah it depends how badly it goes the we're Cold Sun ones I remember I went the first time I went to fight Cold Sun I was like oh I might get a traumatic wound but the wind of war was like everything went perfectly you killed everything I was like oh I have a feeling okay. Thurunin is not going to go that easily. But yeah. it maybe might do. Yeah. We, uh, we'll, we'll get to this when we talk about our Sunday. But It seems like they're we... getting more liberal with giving people wounds. Yeah. Mm. Because I think it's mm. put, like it's literally no harm. It adds to the game. Just like it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can also, like, if you want to retire your character as well, you can go to guard and say, hey, at some point this weekend, I want to go terminal. Can you write me a traumatic wound that I can then present at a suitably dramatic moment. That's awesome. Um, so if you're like, I want to die in the Sunday battle, you go, hey, can I get a traumatic wound related to this? And they'll give you one in the battle or whatever. You can be like, or you can say after the battle, it's like, hey, can you give me a traumatic wound? They'll make you one. And then you can like basically die and have the role play of a physic opening up to see what's going on. Then be like, I can't save them. Oh. So, which I think is really cool. Because um, uh, yeah, a friend of mine did that this weekend. Um, but yeah, really cool way to start the weekend. Um, but yeah, how did everyone else kind of kick off? So I kicked off staggering into camp injured. A couple of the Dread Shields had traumatic wounds as well. So I think a couple of them got treated maybe at the hospital. I Like, only one got treated at camp. We just had a very chilled out time in, really. Went and got a kettle of ale. What a treat. Mm-hmm. What about you, Kerry? Where did you spawn in? Uh, I spawned in at the Jackdaw camp and went to go and get some dinner with Pike and my uncle. I now have an uncle in character. Um, and it was his first time at Anvil, and we thought we'd take him to Questionable Choices with us so that he could roll himself a random sandwich. He didn't look too happy when he rolled whipped cream and then re-rolled whipped cream oh. and then re-rolled <laughs> whipped cream. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can't escape the cream. <laughs> <laughs> they let him, um, I think they let him, like, re-roll to get a different option, though, to be fair, because he didn't end up with whipped cream on a sandwich. Pike, however, ended up with tuna, pate, red cabbage, whipped cream as well, sriracha, and kiwi mint chutney or something like that. I can't remember exactly what the what the chutney was. Like, mm. yeah, something like that. Pike, a lunatic. Um, and he ate it all, and they gave him a medal. <laughs> Because that's what happens if you eat a particularly um, interesting, questionable sandwich. Um, they give you a medal. So, you know, if you if you want a medal, I know you like medals, don't you, Tom? I do like medals, but I also am Have a bit funny about my food. <laughs> I'm I a could very not fussy do that. eating. I, eater. I'm not fussy, but I couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I've so. got, I'd be like, Ugh. yeah, no, no, thank you. Brother, uh. Brother, uh. Brother, uh. So, how did you spawn in, Tom? I basically spawned Camp Giuseppe, the senator, because I wanted to go on a seven o'clock skirmish with the eight people. The PD were very good. The The wind was amazing for Pitter Patter, the rat-based skirmish. But it came out about eight o'clock on a Wednesday evening with eight spaces. I'm like... Eight spaces? Did eight. you get on it? Oh, you did get I on it. I did yeah, get yeah. on it. But pardon me, I, I don't want to bother people online. But... I want to get on the skirmish because it was a big part of my downtime. Luckily, Giuseppe was lovely and let me send some icy mail and he let me get on it. So just to confirm, I got on it. I was like, first thing I did, run and find Giuseppe and got onto the Rat King skirmish, which I am very happy about because I am in a very scaveny mood at the moment. So the Rat 
King Skirmish was actually an encounter tent, which has been something on my Empire bucket list since I heard mm. encounter tents existed. Uh, so we uh, eight representatives from Temeshwar go. I am not from Temeshwar myself, but as I represent a number of jackdaws from Temeshwar, and I went on the rat killing spree in the sewers, I thought I will go and represent their interests. So eight of us go for the Sentinel Gate. We'll walk to the encounter tent, which were like these big black military tents at the back of God, and we go inside. Do you go through the Sentinel Gate? Yeah, you can't. You go through the Sentinel Gate. Yeah, and then you wrap round. Yeah, wrap round. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and we go to the encounter tent. We open it up. Where is the encounter tent? So, top of monstering, right? You know how like you've got the monstering gate mm-hmm. a bit further out. to the left. So I had to look, look at my hands to so see left and right still. Uh, a bit further down to the left is a, a few military black tents, and they're there. Not so a clue. Go inside, and the tent has been made to look like the back street of a city, which is oh, cool. cool. So like buildings on like a painted onto the back of, on a piece of paper on the back of the wall. You've got like washing lines over it. It's almost got a street smell as well. You've got like barrels <laughs> and whatnot inside. That's crazy, dude. They put a portal around the back just to give it that real <laughs> authentic yeah. smell. Uh, everyone was playing it. it smells like, like shit. <laughs> I'm home. <laughs> everyone, all the other league princes who went were like playing. It's like, oh, this is disgusting. I'm like, ah, fresh air. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Better than Tassato, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, really playing into this scummy vibe. And inside there's two guild members of the Rat Kings wearing rat masks. It's quite dark, so you can't see them properly. And we're there to negotiate with the Rat Kings, who are basically the oldest guild in Tassato, so, uh, Tassato who have a very similar vibe to the Jackdaws. So they are your sewer jacks, your uh, night soil removers, your road sweeps, et cetera, et cetera. But they're incredibly good at dealing with rats. So they primarily rat catchers. And they have come with us to say, look, Temeshwa is flowing with rats. You couldn't fit any more rats on in this uh, sewer if you tried. There's wolf rats, all sorts. Here's what we can do for you. We are the best guild to do, do with the job. Uh, they were saying, we can pretty much guarantee we can deal with the symptoms, but not the cause. And it was kind of like, rather than a combat one, it's about the questions we asked. Sure, like, yeah, yeah, really yeah. digging into, why is this happening? Uh, Giuseppe kind of took the lead. He gave them some mead. Uh, my main question was, as a guild, a, print, a merchant prince who represents the interests of five cities within my guild... Will the rats possibly spread to the other cities? Which I think is a legitimate question. Yeah. And they say, good question, but didn't answer, which is like, ooh, interesting. interesting. Yeah, sure. Uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, basically, the thing they came up with is you can't do poison, which is one of the things we could have done to deal with it, because that's a fucking bad idea. Do you want poison coming back out of your sewers with the amounts it will take to kill all the rats? Uh you could let the war dogs do it, but the war dogs can't uh, fit down the smaller pipes that they can get through. And reading the uh, winds, uh, winds of fortune, if you get bite by these rats enough, you go fucking crazy. You start seeing visions. Do we want war dogs fucking charging out yeah. the other way back out of the sewers? Yes. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Bad dogs. Bad dogs. Bad dogs. Uh, we. Uh, we could either then they came to the rat kings we could pay them 11 thrones and they'll deal with it we'll probably take about uh eight to eight to nine months but they should be gone at least for a time or we could pay them eight thrones but we have to give them like a glowing review a review so good that it would wipe out the rest of the rat catching competition in oh, the city. Oh, cool, yeah, okay. Uh, do you want to reveal this or do you want to keep this secret? It sounds like it might be a bit of a it's secret. It's a matter deal. of game. I I supported yeah, one. Sure. My personal supporting was to pay the eleven thrones, have done with it. If if we don't we don't want to get rid of all the other rat catchers. You were just like, let's get it done, yeah. And like have nothing left if they come back, then they have us over a barrel. Yeah. So that was my vote anyway. 
the viewers, uh, listeners can find out in play which uh, one was chosen. But as a little gift, I was also given a little rat talisman. Fun. No oh. magic to it. It was checked for magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now Nietzsche has another like little bit of trash to hang around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> little rat token, which I'm very happy at. Lovely. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, the Coming out of the Sentinel Gate, there was some drama. One of the jackdaws was waiting for me, but I will let one of you guys talk for a bit. I arrived from, so I marched in from the top gate from Dawn. So like the, the gate the, uh, gate from out of character. Um, marched in because Sol had also been to the same place. So we came in like all messed up and stumbled my way into camp, uh, like barely able to see anything. Found my uh, my Seneschal, not Seneschal, steward there, Red Bear, who had also got traumatic wounds from downtimes. We were both like, oh, you look good. Yeah, you too. Um, and then as I'm there, I uh, look over to Glory Square and somebody's being carried in on, two people being carried in on stretchers. Oh, wow. Um, and it's two people who, at the previous event, had got had um, fallen to the Vallorn. So a bunch of people in downtime had gone to Brokelion to get their bodies back. Um, and they carried them in on stretchers and they had bark and vines and green veins because they turned into Valorn spawn husks. That's cool. And they were carrying, they carried them back to the glory square and laid them down. And you remember I told you that story last episode where I was trying to save someone and I, my yeah. hand was pulled from theirs. It was her. Oh. So do you remember how I have a traumatic wound? That yeah. whenever I feel strong emotion, I'm crippled with agony. Mm. I tried to go watch his funeral and then I'm there just falling at the back, like clutching my arm, trying not to scream because it's a funeral. <laughs> oh, God. And someone's like, Tristan, you're all right? I'm like, mm, my arm really hurts. <laughs> I don't want to be here. My tummy hurts, but yeah. I've been real brave I'm about, really it. about it. <laughs> and then to start playing music, the one that made me blind triggers when the music is played. So my arms are pain and then I start screaming. I'm like, make them stop playing, make them stop playing. And then people are like, oh my God, I'm just hearing agony on the floor. Oh they're like, God. holy shit. So they drag me away. Physic comes to check me. I'm like, you can't find anything wrong with me. You can't work out how to fix it. I'm like, what the fuck? And then they do detect magic and they give them my traumatic wound cards because uh. uh, it was a magical disease. They opened it up. I had a bit of the essence of the cold sun lodged within my body. Ooh. Ooh. What and part of your body? Spreading. Um, and basically it was, um, yeah, an essence of cold sun was, <laughs> oh wait, what part of my body? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said all through my body. Uh, my arm. Oh, okay. so it was in my arm and it was spreading through basically if I it was like I had if, if I hadn't got it solved an hour before time out it would have killed me um, oh, it was wow, like wow. it was spreading it's a good thing you role played it so hard yeah exactly <laughs> when you, it was one of those things I was really traumatic where it was like I can't really hide this because I've basically had fantasy dysentery before um, and uh, I was fantasy like fantasy dysentery yeah exactly oh no fantasy kidney failure oh uh, I was going to look at the kidney stones <laughs> yeah exactly I had fantasy sounds like kidney a, failure a metal band Fantasy kidney failure. Um, so I was kind of able to hide that, and it wasn't until a tourney where I got a different traumatic wound that I handed the physic both. Um, but this time I was like, there's no way I can hide this. Um, so it was really expensive. I needed um, spring viz, and uh, two wounds, spring viz, day viz, a herb, and an artisan resource. Oh, wow. Jesus. And obviously the people were like sprinting around like, holy and, crap. Like, and you've got 18 rings in your player. <laughs> yeah, and I got eight yeah. rings my player back. Please, Mr. Viridian, can I have some money? Please. I'm just writhing on the floor like in agony. Um, and then I also had to I had to focus on a piece of welt silver whilst I was telling them stuff that made me happy because it helped me to kind of get like to that the the the, the magic of the viz plus might be kind of focusing on good things helped to suppress mm. the element of the cold. So sun. what does make Tristan happy? Uh, someone asked me to talk about my test of metal. Oh, so I was just like bragging um, for, I think it was like five minutes. I'm like, I've got to talk about five minutes. This is insane. Um, but yeah, which was cool. It was good. Had some nice role play with somebody who was like going to become a night errand that weekend. So I had a really good time with that. Um, and then got got kind of fixed up. Sol, you know, I told you about the music. Sol has bells that she wears. Oh. And every time she stepped, they jingled and she was just clutching her head in agony. <laughs> Oh, no. and, she was, and she was like in the tent like ah like trying to get through it was like where is she um, and then uh, it's uh, basically everyone was racing to take, she has two bells on the end of a jester hat so people were carrying her and grabbing the bells so she didn't oh. jingle um, which was uh, it was it was really good but everyone was running around looking for the resources because they're not easy to come across no. um, 
but that was a really fun to wait to start time in. I was just like, well, that was intense. Uh, I hear my armor. I'm very sweaty, but I need to mm. keep it on because I have a skirmish later. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was a really good a really good start. Like I said, traumatic way to start the weekend was really nice. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of my time in. Um, have we gone for everyone's time in yet? Where'd you get? Hey, do you always go to Wise Guys? Yeah. For my kettle of ale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the the reason I started putting it in the kettle was because it's such there was nowhere else that really did ale at the time. Yeah, this is going sure. back a few events. So I didn't want to walk to Wise Guys every single time to get a tankard of ale. So I was like, oh, what if I just fill up my kettle? And now it's just become a thing. A tradition. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, after the kettle of ale, we were invited to a beautiful dinner at Thorn's Rest Ooh. with Yana and Grunfoss. And I can't remember the IC names, but Kyle and... Jess. And Jess and Jake, of course, um, who invited us over for dinner. And there was a little surprise there waiting for me, which I didn't know about. So Chloe was saying all event, like, Otis, you need to make X amount of money before Friday afternoon. And I was like, oh, my God, okay. So I walked up to um, dinner, and Yana approached me and bestowed me with a ring. And essentially, it was a bond ring that Chloe had planned for us. Um, So we're now bonded, I see, which is very sweet. Mm -hmm. But it essentially means that um, if one of us goes down in battle, then the other one can use um, stay with me. me. Nice. But what we didn't realize, which I found out after, is it also you can use get it together. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So if any of us are either low, we can just boom, give each other three hit points. Like if we're in like a hairy situation or something. Hell yeah. So our rings will like unite like that Captain Planet cartoon. And <laughs> the light power up. of love. Yeah. <laughs> Cringe. Um, yeah, so that was really sweet. And then we sat down and had dinner with them. They're a lovely bunch, the Thorns, the Restians. Mm. We never found out the what the plural pricks. is. The little pricks. And it was this delicious like beef and creamy mushroom. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oh, it was so good. It was real good food. Yeah, so, yeah, we had dinner, and then... And then I had to rush off for something, but I cannot remember what. Mm. So I remember we eating... Was it military council? I feel like Poss- Neve knows what's going on, and Neve got, has got all the shit down and knows where she needs to be, but Chloe oh. just, like, can't remember and can't, like, yeah. you know? Yeah, Neve full on fucking knows, like, she's got her shit together. Mm. Chloe does not. <laughs> on my agenda, I just had kettle of ale, panto, written. yeah. I like that how o- o- to imagine Otis that has that on his like food trunk. Just like, what have we got today? Kettle of ale, <laughs> panto, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it must have been military council. But was it that early? Because this, so dinner was meant to be about half seven, but then. Military, military council starts around eight ish, don't it? Yeah, so I was going to say like dinner was meant to be at half seven. But because we like sat around chatting and stuff, we were there for a while and I ran off to help our friend Tristan find a general of Navarre. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, we, did, we yeah. are sat at Thorns Rest and you can see, just about see Songs and Stories Circle and you can see the market. And I was sat facing the market and I went, oh, there's some very bright flowers. They don't belong here. Oh, I know those very bright flowers. And he's heading towards our camp. Oh, this isn't good. Tristan only ever comes to Navarre if something's wrong. What's wrong? <laughs> I was like, what's wrong? So I got up and sprinted with my poorly foot. And like, headed over. I was like, Tristan, what's up? Who's dead? Who's dead? <laughs> it's time in has been an hour. What's wrong? <laughs> Who's died? What do I need to do? Who do I need to kill? Um, and yeah, you needed to find a general. So we had a little... Little tour of the woods as I was trying to find someone only to then go, oh, yeah, shit, of course, they're all at standing. So took you to standing. That was a really fun moment as well because the general you found was somebody I met at my second ever event. Mm. Um, so uh, we'd met and we did uh, a competition where we were basically doing like a scavenger hunt to find people to win a, the right stab at Herb Garden. And um, we, uh, we did that together. We were on the same team. We won together. And it's just so crazy, like, you know, nearly two years later, no, over two years later, you're like, oh, I'll just go find you one of the generals of Navarre and comes out and it's him. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God, it's you. It was a really cool moment. Cadwell's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Like, we like Cadwell. Um, I won't say why I needed him, but, yeah, found him as a general. You still had you never told me. I want to know. I can't tell you. Yeah, but... I told you, if I told you, I'd have to, I'd have to kill you, so. That's fine, you could try. 
Like, <laughs> hi, what, hi, what a good hi. response to that line. <laughs> if I tell you, I have to go, yeah, you could bully each other. <laughs> it's a very new response. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Um, I think that was like, I did that almost immediately after getting injured. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so after I got fixed up, I came straight to Navarre. Because um, yeah. this was all pretty early on, I think, wasn't it? This was yeah. So when you came, it was... Because uh, we got to Thorns Rest about half seven and then we didn't eat, I reckon, till probably about eight-ish and it was in between then. Sure, yeah. Mm. So it was just before eight, roughly around. And then, yeah, I think I had to rush off to military council. That sounds about right. Yeah. Because yeah. military council, mm. yeah. So I might have accidentally joined a mercenary group. Oh. Hey. How do you accidentally join um, a mercenary group? Well, I was just um stumbled in like, oh, you guys look <laughs> cool. Where are you well, going? I was I was wandering in Varushka, um working up the courage to talk to people who I definitely know out of character and wouldn't feel nervous to approach out of character, but because I don't them, know them in character it was scary. I, don't I also know. get it cuz I think I know who they are. <laughs> yeah. And they're not like they're not unintimidating in character. No, no, yeah. no. no. <laughs> um, but then I just heard someone go, cousin! Yeah, <laughs> and I turn around sweet. and see the LARPer formerly known as Banshat song. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and I mentioned that I was going to go on the battlefield and that's what I was waiting around to talk to him about. Because um, we were both sort of waiting around for the strategy meeting, basically, to talk to... Um, oh, I can't remember... I can't remember what their in-character name is, but we were waiting to see the um, person who sort of leads the strategy for Varushka. Um, and I mentioned that I was going to be on the battlefield and that I was going to be a healer. And um, they were saying that they don't have a healer in their um, mercenary group and they offered me a ring as a retainer. And I just sort of went, um, OK, <laughs> but not not this time. I'm, I'm, I'm interning with the uh, <laughs> with the healing block first. Um, but yeah, so uh, I've sort of agreed to fight with them next time. I'm not sure what a mercenary route means within Varushka, but... Oh you know. lord, the market's getting saturated. Well, Ver I mean, from Ver mercenary groups are on brief for Varushka. Yeah, but I mean, from what dawn. <laughs> from this what isn't glory. <laughs> from what I can tell, I'm pretty sure they were in the battle with us on the Sunday. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, I don't think they were fighting for another nation or anything. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Know. Uh, but it's wagon raiders. That's what wagon raiders are, right? Basically, like mercs. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was basically um, waiting around for that, and I was listening to the strategy meeting a bit. I mean, I actually went to a meeting, guys. Are you proud? Yes. Yay. No, I'm ashamed. Okay. Yeah, don't no. stay away from them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just wanted to try and get involved in the military game without just showing up and not knowing what to do. No, on the I'm day. joking. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Empire um, is a game of meetings. It is, unfortunately. I mean, it wasn't a long meeting, and it was just sort of where they discussed like this is basically the summary of what we do, and sure. this is yeah, when yeah, we'll yeah. have the proper meetings to discuss the actual strategies for these actual battles. This is when we'll know what day we're fighting on and stuff. Um, and then I was just waiting around very excited for warding. Uh, and there was a jackdaw play going on at the same time. So I sort of caught the beginning of the jackdaw play, then ran off to Varushka um, to do the warding um, and basically ended up practically leading the warding because I'm that excited about it. That was right at the front with um, the only person who I know out of character <laughs> who was leading the warding. <laughs> um, so we're marching down. We end up going past the jackdaws, which the play is sort of spilling out onto the path where the warding <laughs> parade is going. <laughs> Um, so people are sort of moving out the way except for one of your jackdaws in Rika who came shouting at us there's a play going on here you're interrupting a play like, it's warding do you want the wolves to come to your play <laughs> so, I uh, absolutely every time I'm in Varushka the warding happens yeah kind of audibly complain <laughs> bloody hell sake shut up I love on. it though because like out of character like I came and had a little argument with him just like straight after like excuse me the audacity of you to come and thingy and then we were like sort of having a little like, I was like I was saying yeah hilarious like yeah that's yeah. good <laughs> he was like yeah yeah no yeah yeah <laughs> he's like oh no I'm just advertising because like it's my job to you know heckle at people and I was like oh right just doing your work then were you mate <laughs> Um, yeah, no, every time the warning happens, if I'm doing business in Varusha, I'm like, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I fucking sake. love warning. <laughs> no, I invoke the creator. <laughs> uh, what else did everyone else get up to? Because that takes us to, that takes me to about eight o'clock-ish as well, because warning's eight o'clock. Yeah, I mean, my Friday was relatively <clears throat> uneventful. Um, well, I'd already had a really busy day. I'd had dinner for one um, and an ale. So I was pretty, I was like, I need to wind down. <laughs> Old man Otis. Yeah. Hero of the Empire Otis. And, uh, <laughs> so I found a really uh, silly little guy uh, you hmm. might know called Cricket. 
Hello, Cricket. Maybe a bit too silly for some. Hello. But, um, Hello. I think this was while you were doing all your serious meeting the LARP stuff and your hmm. military whatnot. Uh, we just went to Hens, I think. and there oh, were. I think I did bump into you. Yeah, yeah, and there were a couple amazing bards. These oh, yeah, two, the Brothers of Starvos. Is that what they're called? Oh, yeah, the ones that do the um, On the Streets of Anvil. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I they like got the there, there, there wasn't many people there, maybe like five. Yeah. And um, yeah, they sort of got there and they're like, are we due to play? And I was like, I don't know the schedule. They were like, should we play a song? And he was like, yeah, go for it, mate. And then people started gathering. They were like, let's play some more. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and that was about it. Yeah. I had, so I had a couple of things going on. I needed to um, pick up my final test, my test of metal. Um, so I went to retrieve that. And it was a beautifully sealed letter um, with little flowers in the wax seal. And I cracked it open after I got it off the person who was setting it. And I had to steal the glory helm, take it on an adventure, and then present the glory helm and the tale of the adventure to the earl that had sent me the test at the beginning of the glory gala. So for those of you that don't know, uh, I think about a year ago, maybe a little, maybe more. Maybe. Um, I think more than a year ago, actually, there was uh, the Earl of Fools came to Dawn, came to Anvil, and they were like, we had this thing in the back of the castle covered in mud, and we just have kind of ignored it for the last few hundred years. Anyway, I was, you know, having a tidy up, we gave it a clean, and it was this beautiful object, and it's this beautifully painted helmet. And they were like, and we thought, do you know who this belongs to? The most glorious Earl in Dawn. So if you think that's you or your Earl, come speak to me over the course of this weekend. Um, so there's a bit of a competition, everyone deciding who the most glorious Earl was. Bit of a Cinderella story. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, eventually it got allocated to the Earl of House Castellan. Since then, a game has begun. And that game is Get the Glory Helm. So all, all you have basically to play the game is you have to touch the helmet and take it back to your camp and present it. And it can be there for... Uh, it has to be there for f at least five minutes mm. and then other people can come around and steal it. And the game is basically to keep hold of the glory helm. So I had to find it yeah, and I had to take it on an adventure. So it was like very cool. Uh, I also handed in one of my other challenges, which was basically I had to find fragments of a song that were hidden over Anvil, compile them in the right order and then present them to an Earl. So I handed that in, which was very cool. Um, and then I went to the plenipotentiary meeting for Lord Rain or Osagaran. Um, which was in the Hall of Worlds. I, had to, I paid for a ritual to get me into the Hall of Worlds. And I went and met Lord Rain, who is an eternal, who's all about, like, not fighting, and he loves boggarts, and he's very lovely. Um, mm. The bards that came on the mission to save the boggarts last summit performed their song for Osagaran, and he was asking questions. He was telling off the Navari for killing boggarts, mm -hmm. which was very funny. He was like, why did you kill them? Why are you working with our halogen? It was very funny. He was very, like, very, like, Spring is very impulsive. It was just very funny. He was just like, mm, no, I don't like you. Go away. <laughs> it was very cool to very cool to go and see that. Um, and that was kind of me at the start. I think um, I had a skirmish a little bit later on, um, but I'm having to pass on to anyone else or what else, anyone else got up to. Uh, so apparently whilst I was beyond the Sentinel Gate, uh, I won't go into too much of who was involved and whatnot, uh, but my Jack Dawes had gone and set up another contract so the contract I had asked them to make was meant to start, or was hoping to start, next summit. The people who said they would hire us, lovely, said, we'll hire you this summit. So whilst I was gone through the gate, someone had gone to negotiate with Benno de Carver to get out of the contract we are with him, pay off his bar tab, which cost us a throne. Hmm. Uh, they didn't know... What I didn't think we'd need the banner this weekend, so I put it safe away in my tent. So I've got a jack door waiting for me on the other side of the Sentinel Gate, uh, thinking, where the fuck's the banner? My skirmish, go, the encounter, went through a bit late and also took longer than I, you expected. So they were thinking for about 15 minutes, oh, God, is Nietzsche dead and is Vodesto the new prince? Yeah. Mm. Effectively, whenever I go on a little adventure, I feel like Troy when he comes back with the pizzas and everything's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Tom? I thought you were about to make a reference to like classical, like classics literature. It's like, no. oh, a Troy reference. <laughs> no, <a> Kim <laughs> my, my brain went to high school musical. <laughs> uh, I'm not a high school musical boy. But yeah, that we thought that was all sorted. However, due to game mechanics and whatnot, 
and just timings. It was too short of notice to get a banner built, mm. organized. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the space of half an hour from... Because what, you need timeless hammer rhythm, the autumn ritual, right? To get yeah. The night? yeah. I've kept all the materials in a box, say, so we had all the materials. It just didn't work out this time. Mm. Uh... I went to sort it out with the guild leader afterwards. They were all kosher with it. We'll sort, we'll sort it out next time. Uh, Jean, my favorite Jean the Conqueror, was like, right, this has happened to us before. It is all good. It's the game mechanics being the game mechanics. It it just happens. Uh, all it takes is one person not to be there or one of the ribbons not to go through or something sure. like that, and it just works out. So after leaving the contract with the Reapers for another contract, we got hired back by the Reapers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't escape. Can't escape the Reapers. Uh, part of the conditions of leaving Benner's contract was Modesto would still go and read his paper, which Modesto was a champ, and still went to read that paper. That's so funny. And yeah, so I thought, you know what? After sorting that out, I'm going to go for a break. I'm going to go and watch the Eel Mill King. Was that on Friday night? That was on Friday night. There was Excellent. two showings. It was Friday night and Saturday night. Saturday night, it was going to be during the Jackdaw party. And yeah. So yeah, Eel Milking, I, all I will say is a fantastic performance. 15 rings a ticket. Well worth it. I was a bit surprised about the details. Yeah. All I'll say is don't drink the light white liquid if you're lactose intolerant. Oh, okay. But it's a fantastic show. <laughs> uh <laughs> Done like an infomercial and how to. Is it? Is it the marches? It's in the marches at the blind eye. Uh, I went in. I was like, "Oh shit! I forgot to pay." Go up to the doll uh, person. I was like, "It's all right. You don't have to pay. The reapers already been paid for." I was like, "Cha ching!" Sit down on my face. Agony was sat next to me along with keys. Uh, Once in the splash zone, Agony was using the League of Friends cape to shield them from the splashing. Incredible. (laughs) So, yeah, that that took me up to about nine o'clock. What were you guys doing in the interim? Uh, Yes, just chilling out at Hens. And then I think I'd pretty, I had an early one Friday. Mm -hmm. Just kind of took it easy. I had found out that we were fighting on the Saturday morning. So I was like, right, I'll be a responsible dread shield and and I'll toddle off to bed. What about, what about you, Neve? Did you get up to much? Uh, military council, military council, and then um, said something under my breath. That was quote bit... unquote under your breath. Uh, that was a little bit loud. <laughs> was it a bit spicy? What that you several said? people heard. <laughs> yeah, this is when you still had your vocal cords. Oh, was <laughs> that you? I thought I heard something from the Jackdaw camp. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, so yeah, military council was getting a bit tedious because it was just a point where people weren't really asking questions. It was like almost midnight. People weren't asking questions. They were just putting their hand up to say, you know, their sixpence worth. And it was just like, it's like you've not asked a question. Absolute classic meeting. I'm here to tell you how good I am. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, fuck this. I saw a couple of um, key members of Navarre kind of head out the tent. Because I'd said in between, because we had um, the war scouts in the tent and then the field marshal was talking. In between the war scouts leaving and the field marshal taking over the event, it was kind of like a little interim. And I'd said in that bit, I was like, oh, um," I said to a couple of the other leaders of Navarre, like, oh, hey, when we're done here, should we head to the Goose and talk about marching order? They were like, yeah, can do whatever. So I thought um, they were leaving for that. So I headed past the goose. They weren't there. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to go sit down for a little bit. Sat down at camp and I was sat there for probably... Sorry, so when you say you had a little rest, do you mean at midnight you had to sit down? <laughs> yeah. Just oh, a little okay. break. <laughs> just just cheeky little break. Um, sat down and then I think I was probably sat down for maybe 10, 15 minutes. Just a little 10 minute sit down at before, midnight. Before <laughs> um, someone was like... Captain's Council, Goose, like, where are you? And I'm like, all right, I'm on my way, come on. So we got to the Goose and um, we were, then we were talking about, because Navarre were first through the gate on Saturday, so we were talking about marching order and we were having just, like, a good old military council chat. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, nice. 
And then it was kind of time to call it because timeout had already hit, and we and were like, "You need to have some sleep before the battle." Yeah, yeah I was like, "Yeah, let's um, let's go to bed." What about you, Tristan? How did the rest of your night go? So I had a skirmish that went on, um, which was cold sun. I didn't think I was going to go on any this weekend, but I got asked to go on this one. I thought the cold sun were done with. The, the basically the armies are shattered, but there's a few remnants knocking about. Cool. Um, and this one was in Redoubt. And it was yeah, I was asked to jump on it. Um, got for uh, you know, got all, all armored up because it's the it's cold sun. And I've always been like, if if it's there, I can fight them. I'll fight them. Um, now the skirmish was technically a success. Hey. Killed every scion. So we went onto the field, and the way they've done the effects for this has been amazing. There was a bank of fog. Oh, wow. Just at the top mm. of the thing. And as we start to go towards them, out of the fog just emerge. Yeah, what time was this? Because I noticed fog yeah, it's in, like in the night time. Yeah. yeah half nine. Started right, they just kind of... like it spread. Oh, yeah, was that, was that not real? Was that for the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we were looking, we were like, wow, how beautiful. Yeah. yeah I was going to say that. I think it happened a couple <laughs> of nights because like, it, oh, they were saying that the glory gala was like... Yeah, it was insane. really foggy on both yeah. Friday and Saturday night. They the cold right. sun. Why? That's how convincing it was. Yeah, because yeah. you were almost like, like real it's not fog. the right temperature to be foggy. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it's a bit hot for this. Yeah. Yeah. Carlton Heralds emerge out of the smoke, um, and uh, we start to move to engage them, and things start getting pulled apart really quickly. It's very desperate. We get we're kind of getting pushed all around the field. There's not. It was true chaos, and then there was like people. I saw people being like executed, and then like. They were doing the thing where they squirt the smoke machine next to people as they get turned to ash. Cool. Wow. Um, and it was like intense running around. I saw one of these uh, heralds over someone who I didn't initially recognize. And I sprint over with dark light, <laughs> slam them with the sword and shout weakness, which means they can't incinerate the person anymore. Halfway through, the, like, they go, I suppose the guy afterwards is like, I'm pretty who just about to say execute. I was like, Weakness and I was like, "What?" and just looked up and I ran away. <laughs> Amazing! Um, it was absolutely incredible. I look back; the guy on the floor was like, "Who we've said is like my childhood hero, my, my character's childhood hero." Aww. And I was like, "Oh, oh no, I need to go back." <laughs> <laughs> but I'd managed to stop him getting turned to fucking. Oh ash, my gosh! That's um, wow. Which is a very cool moment. We eventually managed to swing round and get him back, and we were yeah. kind of slowly working our way through the heralds. A ref did pull me over, like, "Hey, how are you calling weakness?" And I was like, I have a super special sword. Sword. Um, I got a special sword. Yeah, which was very cool. Um, I had to fight, kill them all, but there was a lot of dead people on the skirmish. Mm, like yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like it was a deadly one. It's because they execute. Yeah. So, like, if they didn't execute, it'd be fine because we would have been able to clean them back up again. But because the Colton executes people, that's it, right? You you, you don't actually have three minutes, oh, you have seconds. Yeah. Um, very intense. There was a lot of arguing on the other side of the game about whose fault it was and what happened. And everyone was shouting. I got into a, a bit of an altercation with a changeling, which is, you know, changing on changing yeah. aggression. It's a shame. We were, like, yelling at each other. They just escalate. Mm. <laughs> it just gets, like, really intense. Um, and then uh, that was kind of, like, my 9.30 thing. Yeah. And then I think I'll, I'll end my Friday with the uh, Bard Bonanza, Sol and Pickles Bard Bonanza, which was at Hens. And there nice. was a collection of people who'd been on the Boggart mission, all the Bards and a couple of other people. And they were all singing songs. Oh. There was like um, there was like comedy songs. There was a few like sad laments. Um, Sol sang a song about Tristan because she's an excellent troubadour. Um and then it was very funny at one point. She was like, this song's about Tristan. And somebody in this crowd goes, speech. So I like ducked my head. And I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> going to get out the stage and get pulled back out the tent by someone. Uh, which was a good I moment. can see that. Which I'm glad because I had no idea what I was going to say. But just, it was yeah, just very funny. Just like the, the role play. Oh, an opportunity for Tristan to take center stage. Just wing Sounds it. good. I love doing improv speeches at mm. Yeah. No, I reckon I could just throw something together. But it was very much like I'm doing this for the bit. I hope someone stops me. But yeah, someone literally yeah, grabbed like, me and pulled me like, back. Like smiling like, yeah, but internally like God's Someone stop me, God, yeah, someone yeah. stop me. Yeah, you know, kind of like, <laughs> let me at him, let me at him, pull me yeah. back, let me at him. <laughs> it was just very funny. Um, but it was absolutely amazing. Um, the pub was fantastic. Was that the bird bath hens? Pub? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you like it. 
I had no idea James was bringing a tent that big. It yeah. was so good. The drinks were like really good. Bringing five ring pints back, baby. The, the, prosperity well, pints. Yeah, prosperity pints. And he had ale. And, and he had ale this time, yeah. The, James has done so well this event. He's mm. managed to pay off all his debts. Yeah, because of the location was just prime. Yeah. yeah. We literally had like a... Um, it was just the performance was absolutely stellar. Like it was just all the bards getting together mm. singing stuff. They did like joint songs and they did a few things. There was a bit of audience participation. It was just like one of those things like... We, I think we've... It's been a while since I've done like an Anvil Entertainment Night. Yeah. Which I feel like when you first start is all you do. You go to kind of the still entertainment all I do, spots. But yeah, but, yeah but, like, <laughs> but I just don't do that as much anymore. It's no, nice yeah. to just sit there. And having a song sung about me is always really fun as well. Mm. Um, yeah, really cool. Okay. Absolutely excellent. Um, and then, yeah, this, I'm sure I did other things. I'm pretty sure I went for a drink somewhere. But that yeah. was kind of like the end, the end of my night. Um, I'm at a Herald. Of who? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> of what realm? Okay, well, um, basically, I was at Hens, actually, yeah. at the bird bath, and this guy walks up to us, and he's asking us about anyone who's, like, a wordsmith. And at first, we're sort of, we're sure, like, sorry, no, we're not bards, but I think there's, like, some bardy stuff going on in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, like, um, he, like we realise that he he looks like a freeborn because he's so colourful, like, his kit. He's got, like, purple and blue and, like, feathers poking up. I don't know if you know of that rings. Any bells for any herald so, or uh, All right. Absolute stab in the dark. Yeah. Sounds like the Night Realm. Mm. Um, because the Night Realm is Nagas and they have feathers and stuff. The feathers look like they're supposed to be part More like of like Bird the and Naga, I think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, but literally, because I don't know the names of the Heralds and Eternals and whatever, they just go over my head as soon as you say them. Sure. So literally in one ear, out the other. But like I heard the word Herald and I heard him talking about an Eternal and he was asking us to write down five words of longing. It was so um, it was um I actually know who it was. Yeah, and I, I knew wanted, you would know. I wanted to speak to them, but I didn't speak to them. Oh, oh they were at hands. <laughs> oh, who was it? Bloody hell. Uh, did you write the five letter words? Yeah, yeah so amazing. I was there, Cricket was there and Red was there. Oh. Um, and we wrote down, I got I got our little, um, I actually got a little book when I was doing my trading on E1 and it's like a limited edition for the Empress's coronation little book. Um, and I ripped out three pages and we each wrote down five words with very different connotations. Like mine was um, desire to be more courageous because I was making my whole thing that weekend about sure. my character was trying to be more virtuous in terms of courage. Um, cricket put something along the lines of um, wanting to see an old friend or something. And Red put something like, I wish I'd killed you myself. Oh. <laughs> so all very, very different. It was I was like, I hope the Eternal doesn't think you're talking to them. It was a Herald of Lashnar. Uh, Herald of Lashnar. Yeah. Oh, Bird Daddy. Oh, there we go. Alex knows that. That's yeah, so yeah. funny. Why is everyone, <laughs> stop parentalizing the Eternals. Did you get your token then the next day? No, the token, so what we had to do was post these notes into the Hall of Worlds. So me and Red are both mages, but we couldn't, but Cricket couldn't go in, but it's fine. I was like, where are you right down? So we went to go and post them in. I was like, okay, it's dark. It's a bit late. Fingers crossed it will be empty, but also pretty sure probably Conclave is on and they'll be it'll be absolutely full, which it was. So me and Red are there like, never opened a portal to the Hall of Worlds before. What do we do? And we're both like, um, let's make sure this is definitely the Hall of Worlds. Check with the ref. Yep, this is definitely the Hall of Worlds. I'm there flapping my wings, stomping at the ground and honking, feeling very stupid. I'm like, I needed more alcohol for this. <laughs> and then Red's there next to me pretending to stab at the portal <laughs> because, you know, Navari. Um, and then we open the portal and then go, should we come back when they've gone to post it? Because I can't see the post box. Um, but yeah, um, and then we literally went and hung out. And I think we were with you, maybe Alex, hanging out with the Dreadshields camp for a little bit before you went to bed, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because Cricket was with us as well. Um, and then literally it was like midnight and we decided to go to bed. Did they? Did you we, not so... We swung around and posted our things in the post box. <laughs> did you not get your token on Sunday? So it was during the battle and me and Red were fighting, but it was outside the Hall of Worlds, so we asked Cricket to go. Oh, so Cricket's got the Cricket tokens. Cricket forgot. Oh, right in. <laughs> All got busy. Hopefully right in. Yeah? Do you think I could do that? There's no, well, no, he's not to. Like, write, write a plot out profound decisions and be like, hey, this happened, there was a mix-up, and see what they do. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's no, like... There's we can't no be the only ones who missed it because of the battle. There is, so, on because you missed the Winds of Fortune, the Wind of Fortune says... If you can't make it, yeah. let us know when you like a time when you'll be available between one and three and we'll come find you. 
Um, but you didn't see the window fortune. So no, know. I didn't. Uh, right in, the worst they can say is no. But yeah, but like, maybe they could put it in my player pack or something. Maybe, or they'll, yeah. I would I would definitely check because okay. it sucks that you might... So you what, might quite a profound decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, that's awesome, though, because I wanted to do that and I completely forgot about I it. I absolutely so cool. love that that plot just found me because I'm so bad at finding plots. That's <laughs> awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. It's a bit of plot. It's a treat. I think uh, Lashnar's looked for love stories before as well. Ah, oh, lovely. But yeah, but I actually, um, I say I wrote down the uh, desire to be more courageous, but when I opened it up to check it just before I put it in, I realised that I'd actually put the desire to be more longing um, because <laughs> my brain had crossed its wires and I didn't have a pencil. So I just put it in anyway. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> I was like, well, it's midnight. I'm not going to find a pencil. Put it in the box. <laughs> put it in the box. Oh, well, that's that's the that's the longing that what's his name? What's the eternal called? Lashnar. That's the longing that Lashnar would understand because he's longing to know what longing is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. It's not just a stupid mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's um, my Friday. Nice. Yeah, that was really cool. How do you know Lashnar is called Bird Daddy? I didn't. I was just joking. You just oh right. <laughs> oh, it was like fully like oh, for God's sake. Is okay. That, <laughs> no, as, after, as in I'm, you knew he was a bird eternal. I don't think he's a bird. Just, no, just from your description oh, of the feathers. Oh, just because I but, said that he no, looked a bit bird. Like, yeah. He had a lot of birdie. Just going from the, the spider daddy and the, and all of those daddies. So many daddies. Lashnar. Where are the mummies? Lashnar. Exactly. Uh, uh, um, uh, Kath Kane is uh, frequently. And, and also mummy. Eleonora's. Sorry? That bear mummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lashnar looks like, well, the picture of him is just loads of swirling colours with a face. Um, that checks out. Uh, commonly... Lashnar is most commonly called gibbering Lashnar or Lashnar the loquacious. Um, but yeah, awesome. That's so cool. I really yeah. enjoy that. Did you get anything, get up to anything else on Friday? Uh, not really, because we did, um, as I say, mostly we're just chilling out other than that, you know? Nice. But yeah. Um, yeah, I opened the Hall of Worlds for the first Whoa. time and I met Harold for the first time when I joined a mercenary group but I led a parade, kind of. My, when I had the ritual... It was a red night. I had the ritual cast on me to go into the Hall of Worlds and the guy that was doing it acted like a bouncer. So the magician stood there <laughs> and he was like, what do you want? It's like, we want to go to the Hall of Worlds. Well, yeah, obviously. What's your business? <laughs> mm, not sure I can let you in. None, yeah. <laughs> Give me more. Give me more reasoning. It was just. It was very funny. Like the way he cast the rituals. Like we had to do a deal with the bouncer to be able to get yeah. into all the worlds, which was fun. Yes. No shirt. No blue booties. No service. No blue yeah. booties. Oh, no. Um, Did you do yeah. anything else, Tom? Yes, I'll try and wrap it up quickly because we've been going for quite a while. Yes, we have. Goodness. So, uh, went to a meeting about to discuss the Rat Kings and what we will do for the deal. We did have one other silly suggestion we could do. The jackdaws hold the chair of the wolf, and we could potentially give our build slot to one of the reapers to put in mithril sewer grates in Temeshwa to control the rats. Whether that would do anything or not, who knows? But keep, keep the rats in. Yeah. It would look like the most blinging sewer street uh, sewer system of all time. Uh, went to the prince's meeting. Usual shebang, really. Uh, my attention span was really low for that one for some reason. But we also did have L because it was uh, set up at the Reapers this time. L behind us setting up a little table with wine, grapes, uh, candles for wine club. We even had a little chalkboard to record the scores for the wine this time. And she had made a special prize, a medal for the shittest wine, which was nice because the bread, uh, the, uh, Medals from for the Bobby Dazzlers did not make it to the LARP. So I'm kind of gutted they got left in the ox cart and went back up to where it was. So you got who? who so got the... we were going around sipping each of our little wines, judging them. We had quite a few who actually liked wine and two people who didn't like wine as well, who we brought in. It was like the leader of the Bloody Droves and uh, the leader of the Sea Wolves, all drinking our little wines, giving them rated. El had brought a chalkboard to go with it. And the two losers came down between me and my good friend Prince Sicaro of the Crimson Reapers. <laughs> uh, so, in order to decide who had the shittest wine, we had to duel. Oh, okay. Yeah, obviously. Which got stopped because it was in the dark and we were a bit tipsy. And oh, apparently someone described it as 
Oh, it sounded like horse whips cracking against oh each other. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, because someone <laughs> got too into it, I'm assuming. Uh, we both did. Yeah, yeah, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sikoro won. So by his victory, I won the medal for the shittest wine at Wine Club. That's so yeah. Is that yeah. really winning, though? Yes, I get a medal. Okay. <laughs> I told you he loves his medals. I should have entered a bottle of gonk. I should yeah. have entered a bottle of gonk. Well, there was a the rule: you cannot bring box wine. That's cheating. Why is it cheating? Some box wine's actually all right to have because just for intentionally fact, bringing shit wine. Oh, actually all right. Uh, we also we also had an arm wrestling match to also decide it afterwards. But yeah, the wine, the winning of the medal was kind of the end of my night. Excellent. Nietzsche is slowly getting covered in more and more trinkets. As they say, aspirational kit, isn't it? Is being covered in trinkets. I kind of want, you know, uh, like Russian generals in the Soviet war had like yeah, loads yeah, of medals yeah, yeah, that yeah, mean yeah. absolutely nothing. 100%. I want a big chest full of those and just to walk into military council as a general one day. It's like, what are those for? Well, and then just go on a long tirade of the stupid shit Incredible. Nietzsche's been up to. I love how you won worst wine. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's even got a little skull. So that's another little skull to add on to my kit. Oh, my God. It's like people keep mistaking me for a reaper for some reason. I it's, wonder it's why. <laughs> anyway, I think, does that round up Friday night? Yeah, on that, so. on that note, we'll leave it. We've got a lot to talk about Saturday, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. Lots of good stuff to cover. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Do we have any five-star reviews this week? Yeah, I'm getting to that. So, uh, easiest way that you can support us is if you uh, like, subscribe, follow, download our episodes. Um, and if you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, I am legally obliged to read it out. And we do have one for me to read out this Ooh, week. What a treat. Um, I don't, the, the, the heading's cut off, but it's, so it has one of the podcasts in the, so I think it must be one of the podcasts in the world, which is, which is true. Five stars. You guys are my favorite lab podcast. The production quality is always so fantastic and you never fail to make me laugh. It's always a perfect balance of humor and drama. However, this podcast could have more tarp discussion. I think I agree. I think I know. We've had a bit of tarp. we've had a bit of tarp discussion. We should. We, we have. We, we had, had a tarp alarm a couple episodes yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, since I know you have to read these out, and I know he'll be listening, Kieran stinks. Oh. Sparkle oh. emoji, sparkle oh. emoji, smiley face. Wonderful. Just just for tarp content, we Jackdaws did get a new tarp technically to go over their camp. So you got a tarp. There you go, guys. Tarp All content. All of our tarps were dry on Sunday. Yeah, they were. Yeah. 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 The judges um, didn't have our usual big green one. So again, Fergus, not Master Three Thousand, Doctor Outdoors has doctored two separate awnings to make one giant one for our camp so absolute king there you go guys yeah. your tarp content that's Three like pieces four of pieces premium. of tarp content oh, four yeah, yeah. Of premium tarp content. there you go stop Con talking about it concentrated <laughs> content. yeah, yeah. Tarp content. for Come our hundredth episode we should probably do a tarp episode. we will be we doing a tarp it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, give the okay. people Assuming what they we want. make it that far without getting cancelled <laughs> yeah well yeah maybe um but yes, thank you very much. If you want to support us more directly, we do have a Patreon. I would like to say thank you to our wonderful patrons for supporting us. Thank you. Um, thank you. You can find us on Patreon Thanks. at uh, Fabletop. Woo. Woo. Um, what else? Oh, if you would like £15 off your first Empire ticket, you can use the our discount codes in the episode description below, which gives you £15 off and it gives us £15. What a treat. Um, so once again, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. We will be back soon with our Saturday coverage. Um, but before the, uh, until then, um, have a wonderful week. Bye, friend Arena. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.